you're about to write an article for me on this. So I am. walk me through this, because because you, we've had this discussion many times. Obviously, I'm I'm a a huge proponent of consistency, yeah. which means we got to get to impact in consistent metrics. And then you're obviously you got to play on tour, so you got to make sure you got speed. So right. we're we're always finding a balance between the two. You and I are. Yeah. I I want speed too. I want you to have speed, but I want there to be that don't swing too hard, stay consistent, and you want to make sure you get out there 300 yards. So let's talk through that a little bit. Well, so, you know, so what ends up coming down to the discussions is we say, okay, we both believe in single plane, which we both do, and we say, what fundamentals are like the foundations of the single plane? Like, you know, uh, if, and what we both, we were just talking about it, is one of the most consistent things is when you're coming down in transition and then actually hitting the golf ball, we, we always call it the wall, where the right foot is down, the left knee is braced, and it leads, assuming that your plane is good coming down, it leads to a perfect release. Walk them through, let's walk, Let's just because some people don't know our relationship, but walk them through the fundamentals, so address. Go to address first. Right. Right, so let's, yeah, go line, is, let's go down the line, let's go down the line first. So This is an unnegotiable address. Yeah, show, show them down the line, so this right. is not negotiable. Yeah, because you need this setup, you need the tilt, you need the left arm, to be able to make it so that your impact is so simple to get to. Right, and your club clubs aligned on the plane with the trail arm, and you're in your address. So there's that's that is that is has to be the lead arm's higher, the uh, the clubs aligned with the trail arm. That's a must, right? Right. Legs are pretty straight. Everything's great. And and you've just gotten rid of like seventy percent of the do compensations it, that other people do have it to face do. on, so they can see it face on. Okay, you've just gotten rid of seventy percent of it. You know. All right, so now you got the alignment of the lead arm. I love your tilt to your body. Everything's great. You got the shoulder tilt. So now you're put perfectly aligned there. So there's that's non-negotiable for right. us. Okay. Definitely non-negotiable because now you put your plate. It doesn't take any speed either. So, so it's not something that you worry about. Um, and the big thing that we care about is that first move. There can't be any compensation, right? You can't be dropping your head. You can't be raising your head. You're, you, the idea is that left. The, the, the fit club face relative to your left arm needs to stay very, very consistent. It's just like rotate and then and then uh, hinge. Sorry, rotate, yeah, fold, hinge. fold up. Fold, so, right. so all right. So go through the backswing for them so they can see it. So on your single plane address, you're gonna go. Everything moves together in the first move, and you fold up. So yeah, so you go and that here. puts the club onto a plane. Right. There you go. Perfect. So and now you're so the biggest deal that we challenge ourselves with yes. is the next step. Yeah, so Producing speed into impact, and I want to make sure. And tell, uh, so, explain them the wall real quick. Okay, so this is the wall, and I did not start hitting the ball at like a premium level where I was shooting in the 60s in mini tour events, which I've been doing for a while. I, ha I didn't start doing that until we really got our impact position correct, which is where that left knee is braced, the right foot is down, and it leads to a full release where the club releases over. What I would do is I would over rotate or go past it. And my, and I would literally over rotate that upper body, and it would like hold on to the club face, and I could hit it good sometimes, but it was leading to a lot of misses. And Todd and Mo, Chandler, like a lot of really good single planters, they have that nice release, which leads to a very very consistent strike. The club face always returns to square, and it took me a while to get that. And when I got that, the ball just started going like dead straight, and and we call that the wall. Show them what it is to you. We call it to the wall. So basically, you actually feel impact and your hips can't go anymore, and your left arm isn't gonna go anymore, so your left arm literally just folds. It allows the trail side of the body to rotate around the left side of the body, basically. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't feel stressful, it's like... And the goal is, is that you can hit that position every single time. Yeah, and, one, and once that becomes foolproof in your muscle memory, you can crank into it. And then the one thing that I've been doing is our impact position has been good, but I've been rotating probably past where Mo rotated to, past where Todd rotates to. So even though relative to my grip, it's not like I'm doing any compensations, the club starts to look a little across the line. But I do rip it into a good position here, and then I hit the wall, and so... Well, we've been seeing on the track, man, you've been between 114 and 117. Uh, Almost every time, yeah. Yeah, every time. So that's, that's where we're at right now, and that's where we've been kind of finding this balance between consistency and speed. Yeah, and my right foot would cheat up sometimes, and that's what we said, no. If that right foot che cheats up, it's gonna throw off your rotation, which is gonna throw off your path. It over-rotates. And, and, and it'll over-rotate at impact, which is 
really you need the club to be going into impact properly. And uh, so as we as we wrap up here, um, tell them what you think that most people make mistakes with when they think about that wall position or, or getting to that ideal impact. Where do the people like straightening the lead knee or where do they have the most problems? Oh, well, especially like regular people, what they'll do is to create speed, they'll, they'll jump, which is a very normal move. It's and move hang back. I did for a long time. And that's where your left knee straightens and your right foot comes out and up. And what happens, especially if you set up in the single plane position, you're literally going to come steep. Yeah. And you'll come around it, yeah. right? And it's something that I did. And then you're not gonna be able to release it properly. You can't fully release out towards target if you're coming in like this. Right. And you can see it on the track, man. When the foot stays down, path is like what, 0.2. Like it's like literally going right down the target yeah. line. Um, and if, you, if that foot starts to cheat up, We'll see negative one and a half, negative two. All right, rip one. Is the track man working? We're gonna. How many have you rip one here? All right. See what you can get, and we'll go look and see what the track man says. All right, let's, let's, let's get going. Keeping that right foot down. Keep the foot down so we can get consistent at the wall. There you go. That's literally my feel. Pounded. All right, let's go take a look at track man. See what we got. Spin rate's pretty good. Or that was a messed up range ball. 114 and a half. All right, let me look at that. So hold that up for a second. This is what I can get it on the camera here. So, so path was almost about one degree. I don't know if I can see that on my phone here. Oh, here we go. So we got path was one degree. Where's the speed? Speed was 114 and a half. So 114.4. The only reason the ball speed's low relative to that is because it's a range ball, which is dead. Yeah, we hit some early better balls earlier, like 170. So that's yeah, great. One, yeah. yeah.